We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so next, did everybody have, did everybody receive a copy of the minutes from our September 21st meeting? And if so, I'm looking for a motion to approve. Oh. A second? Else? Oh. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> we heard you, Don. Don opposed? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Who's in on Zoom, Don and Rose? Jeanette, all right. Jeanette, Jennifer. Okay. Next, I'd like to open up anybody for public comment. No? Okay. Hearing none, we will move on. I would like to, I'm honored tonight. Uh, would there be a public comment at the end of the meeting? No, just, would you like to speak now? Uh, I, I just wanted to, to ask one or two things uh, from the village perspective. Um, first of all, I was wondering whether uh, you all had decided on meetings to talk about potential um, septic and erosion loss in combination with the village and uh, representatives from the community. And the other was whether a task force um, your end had been formed to join with us to discuss Airbnbs. Okay. Um, I'll get back to you with the answers, but the Airbnb is on our agenda for this evening. We haven't met since I talked to you. Okay. Okay. And, uh, my last thing was, <clears throat> yep, and my last thing was a question uh, about Snowmobiling, um, I got a, a notice uh, regarding the fees that was paid by uh, several of the only updates they were waiting on uh, information from was pleasant and I was no idea what she said. Jeanette, we're having a hard time. You're really breaking up. I have no idea. Something about snowmobiling? Yeah, that the they're waiting for information from Lake Pleasant. Correct. They received that information today. They lost okay. the first set. What happened was, is when we sent it in with other paperwork, they did receive the other paperwork, so we're assuming it just got lost somewhere because it went in the same packet, but they got another one today. Okay. So that's taken care of. All right. All right. Thank you. That it? Okay. I couldn't hear the first I don't stuff that she was talking about. She was talking about, she's asking about whether or not we, the town has been meeting or discussing the Airbnb situation, that, oh, okay. which is on the which agenda. That's on our agenda. And for then tonight. I don't know something about information on snowmobile. What I don't know what this yeah, is. Yeah, I know what that's about. Yeah. Here. Oh, that's... well, I don't know what that's so because okay. somebody just no, it's like just me. those two things. I thought I missed something. In the okay. Beginning. What it was is is we had sent the paperwork in for our thirty thousand dot. Well, part of Randy, you want to explain, explain it? Thirty percent part of the grant. The what we groomed. Oh, oh okay. For, okay, fine. And somehow. I know now how they, after an explanation today, it got the paperwork got shuffled around somewhere okay. and okay. misplaced. The time frame came up for them to post this illustrious how much money every town gets. Uh -huh. And because we did, they didn't have our voucher, they couldn't they reported no response from Town Lake Club. Oh, okay. Right. So today I sent them another letter saying with the voucher, sign another signed voucher and said this and, and you know we would never forget to send something like that in when it means money, money. coming back to the town. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you. Okay, okay. I'm on. Absolutely. I'm honored to. And it's, the third thing was with septic and erosion. That there was a, a joint group in town and the village that we were going to look at a proposal for uh, septic and erosion control. Septic um, and erosion. Actually, I announced that at the last meeting that we were waiting until mid-October to start working on that, as we had agreed. Okay. Okay? Okay. I think so, someone else just came on. Okay. So is that it for public comment? Okay. 
So now we're going to move on. I'm honored tonight to introduce Assemblyman Robert Smullen and thank him for coming. Would you like to speak? Uh, is that okay? We would love it. Mayor? Absolutely. I, re I really appreciate uh, the opportunity. I'll, I'll stand in front of the camera so uh, citizens out there that are on Zoom uh, might be able to see, uh, see me as well. Uh, it's great to be here in the, in the town tonight. Appreciate the opportunity to, to come to the public meeting. I'm making my way around the 46 towns, 13 villages, and two small cities that are in the 118th Assembly District, uh, mostly to listen to what's going on, uh, hear, hear people's concerns. Uh, I do have, uh, I'll take as many questions as the, as the supervisor would allow on uh, matters of state budgeting at this point. There's really uh, not a lot of good news out there in, in, in the state budget realm. Uh, because of obviously the coronavirus, the reduction in tax receipts, and then uh, the current policies uh, that the governor has as far as the director of the budget having uh, process control over the, uh, you know, the, the paying out of monies to state aid, to localities, to school districts, to nonprofits that support uh, social services organizations and, and a variety of other state expenditures. So really it's been... Uh, you know, we, we knew we had a budget when we when it was passed uh, in April, uh, and now we think it's somewhere about twelve billion dollars is where the the number lies in terms of uh, the the shortfall between revenue uh, and planned expenditures. So there's going to be you know some decrements that are going to have to be done there. Uh, a lot of the thought was was to look to the federal government for something from the fourth stimulus package. You see that in the newspaper. It's not. It's not good news for New York State, uh, based on uh, what I see from the, the uh, public uh, pronouncements about the negotiations between the Senate and the House at this point, sort of thing. So we're we're still waiting. The legislature is still in session. Uh, we have not been called back. We're at the call of the Speaker. We do have the option uh, of within ten days of of a proposed uh, budget uh, resolution. To be able to weigh in as, as the assembly and as the uh, senate uh, but right now that hasn't happened so we're we're kind of in a limbo period i think that'll last at least through the the november election mm -hmm. sort of thing uh absent that i can talk whatever anybody needs to about the various uh, programs that i know about uh, if i don't have the answer i can find out it's uh, you know it's all uh within the uh, the quarterly reconciliations of where the money is coming in and where it's going out sort of thing but uh Minus that, it's great to be here. Uh, love the library here, and happy to you know to be your representative in Albany. I have a question. If that's the so said time, mm -hmm. uh, snowmobile grant money that we were just speaking of, nobody seems to be able to find me an answer. Is are they going to continue the grant program this year? It's supposed to be just registration fees and such, and dispersed to the towns. And here it is budget time up and filling in those magic blanks of revenue. Right. Can we count on that money coming forth? So if there's a, a program that's uh, where the money comes in specifically from something and it's supposed to go out, that is the, the budget's divided up into various buckets. $175 billion is the budget. $100 billion of it is money that can be moved around that's, it's, that has more discretion to it. But there are other buckets of money, which you may be speaking of is like say fees that are dedicated to a certain program and task. Correct. So as long as snowmobilers are registering their snowmobiles, that money should be then be coming back in so it can go back out for those programs. Okay. A lot of people have asked me about CHIPS money, you know, about that. Uh, next one's the next yeah. one. <laughs> so coming. Your, uh, my, my advice, my recommendation, uh, as it's been throughout the summer, is to be conservative in your expenditures because the town has to front the money up front and then you know get to, you know get it reimbursed sort of thing. Twenty percent is the the, the figure. Twenty percent has really uh, uh, frightened a lot of the school districts. They're they're different. They each school district is different. Some are much more dependent on state aid than others. Uh, what that means in practicality is every school district needs to make a, a best case decision on, you know, their property tax revenues, you know, plus or minus a certain amount of state aid. How is it going to add up? How is that going to affect staff? I know some school districts have, uh, through attrition, uh, retirements, 
Uh, people have left and they haven't rehired on just as a hedge uh, against the, the, the numbers staying down sort of thing. But tax receipts are down. We don't deficit spend without, uh, and, and New York has a, has a very poor credit rating, so it's bonding, it costs a lot of money to, you know, to borrow money. Uh, and there's been a variety of proposals for uh, revenue enhancers, which, uh, uh, none of which I agree with. <laughs> so, if we're already up to 20% this year, would it be safe to say that the overall for all three programs under the chips, the EWR and pay, and pay are they going to get nixed completely or 20% like they did this year? So my thing is that they're going to guess. Be, they're, they're, my guess is that they're going to be decremented in the years out. So the recovery that we, we've all been expecting, you know, we thought when when we shut the state down, you wear a mask for two weeks, you flatten the curve, we come out of it, we get back to business as usual. That's the the V-shaped recovery. So the coronavirus, this is my my uh, take on it. There have been winners and losers economically. Some of the winners. Uh, Amazon, you know, they're, they're, they're delivering stuff to people's houses so they don't shop, sort of thing. I'm sure they bring Amazon packages you know, here to Lake Pleasant. Uh, winner, uh, Walmart, uh, lar you know, large big box stores, winners because they had certain essential goods that kept their entire retail operation open. That's, that's one aspect of the economy. Big losers, restaurants, they've gone down, some won't come back. I mean, and we, we know that to be the case uh, now at this point, especially in New York City where the, uh, the seating is 25%, where we've been a little bit more fortunate with outside seating in the summer, inside the 50%, you know, our, ours have, have recovered better. Uh, but at the same time, people have to eat, so like some grocery stores are up 25% uh, in the pandemic. So winners and losers, some of them go down and bounce right back. That's a V-shaped recovery. Some of them go down and it takes a long time for them to bottom out and then slowly the restrictions are lifted and then slowly they pull out. And then as they pull out, people's spending priorities change, gyms, bowling alleys, you know, some of the late uh, movie theaters are still, you know, still not open sort of thing. They go down and they bottom out slowly and then they come back up slowly, more like a traditional recession, like in 2008. Sort of thing. So some sectors of the economy, municipalities included, are going to have a U-shaped recovery, not a V-shaped recovery. So that's my my counsel as far as spending is you know you're in budget season right now. I know you're going to discuss the budget tonight. Uh, I've seen it across my district, which is uh, like a recession that goes down and it takes a while to bottom out and come back up. And we don't anticipate we anticipate even a bigger budget deficit at the state level next year. A bigger deficit, absent revenue enhancers, which the money's not there because the, the economy isn't there. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very tough situation to be in sort of thing. No, no good solutions to it. So that's from my, my view in Albany. So, so basically don't bank on me. EWRs in the Cape of New York. No, I wouldn't bank on the, the federal government coming in with a, hu a huge fourth stimulus package. Right. So therefore, the state state can't state can't bank on a huge stimulus package. Or that. It's all borrowed money. The, the, you know, the three trillion uh, plus. Sort of thing. All borrowed with the full faith and credit of the United States government behind. It's got to be paid back. So. Mm -hmm. Not to take up more time, but FEMA's uh, <coughs> Halloween storm. Yes. Like, very slow coming in. Mixed, mixed results in, in terms of outcome. They have uh, the money there has come, like Sequoia got their money out in the Utica area, sort of thing. But Dodgeville didn't, you know, there's there, nothing there, sort of thing. So it's been very individual and it's been very sporadic. Okay. So, no, I don't have a good answer for Good, good answer for that. People, people that have put in. Right. It's we, not a yes or a no. Right. Yeah. We, we're expecting the process that grinds that on. one of the many checks to come soon. Yep. Um, state has it, and now they're for municipality. Yeah. Yeah, the process grinds on. It grinds. It's it's like on the state. That's the first way to put it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Yeah. You're all done. No, but.
Thank you, Bob. Uh, <clears throat> we, we expected to hear your analysis that way. Um, I think that towns, municipalities, certainly schools, are going to have to expect this as a two or three year process. That's right. And some are much more, you know, different tax bases than others yep. sort of thing. It's really, it's, you know, they're all, every, every town is different, just like every school district is, is different in terms of their tax base. Sure. So. Okay, that's it. Right. Straight shooting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right Thank now, you. So. You're welcome okay. to stay. Or Stick or around for a little bit. Uh, I'll probably go. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You said you have tonight, a long so ways to go. So. So we thank you very much thank for coming. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Good luck. Is that okay if I did a picture? Sure. If anybody wants to mask up or whatever sort of thing, I know it's, people are super sensitive about it sort of thing. Yeah. We did an investing. It's not going to work. <laughs> Let's do this again. <laughs> I just want to let everybody know that I'm coming around to the town board of course, and sure. whatnot. So I, I think really this is very important. It. it really is. Yeah, I, I try to be uh, accessible. I've got some cards there mm -hmm. if anybody mm -hmm. needs to get in touch yeah. with me. Oh. If anybody in, uh, in, in Zoom, uh, I've got my Johnstown office or my Herkimer office. I'm glad to, uh, to, to listen in on what's going on for constituents and, and what I may be able to do to help out. We did over 2,000 unemployment uh, inquiries with the unemployment uh, insurance claim system. It was a mess. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still not fixed. There's still people that haven't been paid. Uh, the backlog, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's real and it's, uh, it's, it's been consistently uh, slow, inex inexplicably slow as mm -hmm. to why it, uh, it's gone that way. Yeah, so. we've had a dispute since the beginning of June mm -hmm. and never heard anything and finally, beginning of August, I called, uh, and they said, yes, it was there, it was on a pile on the desk, yes. um, and we continue to get these bills, and we continue to pay these bills, right. that with this COVID, it's this COVID uh, unemployment, that just, it's just not making sense, because our employee still has, is getting paid, but getting the COVID unemployment, and we're paying that. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, so, so. that's a that's a fraud issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that needs to be you know that needs to be looked at because there's. I want to say we had a, the the last uh, hearing I did with the uh, the labor commissioner was uh, forty two billion dollars had been paid out. You know, and they knew that they had stopped over a billion dollars in fraud at that point, and I, I don't think we've hit the bottom of that no. uh, issue at all. That's still a lot sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. it's a very dysfunctional system. They were woefully unprepared for the amount of claims and they've been remarkably slow to catch up given uh, all of the executive orders that have you know that have kept people from going back to work mm -hmm. yeah so okay thank you <laughs> well said very yeah. well, diplomatically said <laughs> thank you very much thank you, thank nice you. To see everybody safe travels Good night. Good night. be well bye everybody out there. So bye thank you i'm sorry neil no, Okay, so next is Highway Randy. Sorry? Pull down there? I think it was Roxy. No, Roxy left. Oh, it's Gary. Gary. Oh, just Gary. Okay. Gary. Highway. Yes. Yeah. Highway. I'm trying to make this as quick as possible now that I used up some of my time. Uh, paving went um, okay today. The end result was great. It was a long day. Uh, thanks to all the towns. Many broken trucks so on and so forth. Uh, we did get the first two roads done today. So tomorrow we're on to the third road of our normal paving. Um, not uh, FEMA you know, situations. So the FEMA, I just asked questions about, we received a voucher and such from the state. We're waiting for the check. We received a letter saying the check was coming uh, via email and we still haven't seen a check so that's the first which is the smallest um, i pushed some buttons this weekend speaking to some people um, through the state organizations to find out where this blue book is what they call it it is which is the last signature that we need we have received that for two of the things that were promised to us already and they told me that we should have had it and they will find out 
in the days to come why we have not received it um, for those larger projects that we put in for back in June. Randy, where do you find us in relation to Tracy and County and the other highway supers? Uh, I find us little paperwork wise ahead of the system, okay. but same boat, nobody's yeah. getting anything. Okay. So we're not, well, we're, you not can do we're definitely not falling behind, but we're, we have some of our projects all finalized and supposed to be at the state level. And we're, for some reason, from FEMA to state, it's not getting processed. So, and that's where I found some people that know some other people in the state organizations. And yeah. Hopefully that they can do some research for me. Good. It seems to be sitting on someone's desk. Way too long. Yeah, well, that's that, that's why I asked. I mean, Tracy used to have some some clout at the state highway supers association. It's really uh, you do have to keep working that side of the street. Yeah. Um, next Thursday we have on-site visits at two of the projects, the larger projects. So that I've been asking for that since the get-go. That's so a step forward that they're coming. We have a time frame that they'll be here. So next week. Who's they, Randy? Huh? Who's they? FEMA. They FEMA. being FEMA inspect inspectors. Site inspectors. Site inspectors. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones that will tell us, okay, we do need a historical society, or society, preservation <laughs> people here, um, and or we don't need them here, and we can just continue on with the whole mitigation up to a bridge. But, you know, the... the they're the ones that are going to tell us what avenue to go down. And until they came, I, I, my hands were tied to, you know. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we're going to do core sampling. We have surveys of the Fish Mountain culvert. The surveyors already came from the, with, you know, that the engineer hired. Tomorrow the core sampling people will be there, which will drill the ground and see if it's stable enough for what we are proposing, um, which will be good hopefully in the next week. Those analysis will get back to the engineer and I'll be able to present them to the FEMA people next week. So we're starting to get them all rolling on that project. Um, as I said to him, the CHIPS money this year is restricted by 20%, which means about $17,000 we will not have in our revenue fund um, for the 2020 budget. Um, conveniently, I think we are not spending, at this point in time, all of our money that was allocated in it, in the expense column. So, we should be okay as far as making the budget hold there for this year. What I was speaking to Bob about is, Mr. Smolin, is there's 20% in the chips, but there's also the paid New York fund and the uh, emergency fund, which is part of that 87000 that we get from the state. If they completely, there's rumors of them completely taking them out and 20% of the chips, which will then put us down, you know, probably thirty or $40,000, not seventeen. Mm -hmm. So that being said, it's kind of like, I would really like to know that, what, what they're planning on. Yeah, I, think I don't would, think anybody knows. Any reliance on the, the mm -hmm. state at this point where the estimates went from $6 billion, uh, without pass and go to $12 billion, right. as far as shortfalls, uh, they are in a free fall on the revenue side. Uh, it starts, of course, with um, sales tax mm -hmm. and, and just keeps going. Fees. Uh, you know, you name it, gas tax, every, every, everything that's not moving is not spending. Um, and I don't see why this would be surprising to the state, um, but some people seem to be agog by it. But I don't think that for any of us making small budgets in municipalities and schools, that we should be relying on any of the usual lifelines. Um, because I, I, as I said, I think it's gonna be two, three years before this tailspin is over. Um, and reliance on the state is, is a fool's error. Randy? Yep. As far as the chips go, the 
monies that we have that we get reimbursed for mm -hmm. are you basing that on 20 percent of what we were supposed to get or 20 percent of what we spend and we're supposed to get reimbursed for no 20 percent of what we were supposed to get okay well, that's good estimate but he's, just, he's under it now so it's we're safe in no no budget, i understand but, um, that but i didn't know if because we didn't spend it all, oh, okay. would they cut us by 20%? No, no. Um, we, let's put it this way. We spent yeah. enough to get to that point mm -hmm. because we put in more in the expense line than we do what we get for chips. Okay, gotcha. We've been matching it. Mm -hmm. So our expense line, you know, what they take out of our revenue line uh, will also come out of the other side. Make sure I don't spend in the expense line so that we're the budget is whole. Yeah, gotcha. over the lines okay. of January is one thing, but but okay. forewarned is forearmed as far as what we're going to talk about later in the next few weeks, uh, mm -hmm. formulating yours and right. the other departments. Because I just learned this in our first Highway Association meeting last week that this is you know what they were saying they're going to cut our 20 percent, but then they dropped a bombshell. They're probably going to take those other two funds completely out. Yeah, because the EMR and the EWR and, and the WR. Paid New York are probably not going to be there at all. So it's going to hurt a lot um, right off the bat. Yeah. Which was after the budget, my proposal. So mm -hmm. um, I deducted 20% out of it, but mm -hmm. not 20% plus take those two out. Mm -hmm. um, snowmobile, everybody seems to be talking about the snowmobile. I think we just discussed it. The paperwork got shuffled around. Mm -hmm. I talked to the lady at Parks and Rec today. One of She works Monday and Friday. Another first lady works Tuesdays and Thursday. Another one works Wednesday and Friday. So everybody gets the mail. Everybody sort, sorts the mail. Mm -hmm. This is going to this place. This is going to that place every day of the week. Somehow, one of our vouchers got misplaced. And that's exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So no blame, no fault. They notified me the day that, you know, we they had to give a report of how much money every town gets. And at that point in time, they did not have our voucher, so they put no contact from us. They emailed me that day. We went through the whole backgammon of who said what and where is it and all that. This morning, I sent them another voucher. By 9 a.m., I called there to make sure she got that email. She had only got it, she had already processed it, sent it on to the people paying it, and as far as she knew, everything's back kosher. Good job, Brady. Good. <laughs> Staying right it on top. It was amazing how many people noticed wherever that listing went that the town yeah. didn't respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which it happens. that knows me when it comes to getting money, mm -hmm. I'm all over. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, buildings. The new filters are in at the health center and installed. Um, took a while, but we got them. We had to do a couple modifications on one of the condenser unit drains that was in the way of the filter. So it opened the door and so on. We started doing the siding on the what we call the old bus garage at the municipal campus. Um, the camera system for the health center was for some reason sitting at a warehouse in, for a month in Syracuse and now has disappeared off the face of the earth according to Amazon and so that's why we received a credit of the $581 again. Um, this is now for the second time through Amazon. Um, it doesn't seem to uh, be able to make its way here so Reluctantly, I'm going to ask Matt to pick out a different system. It will not be the identical system as this one, but it, we, that supplier doesn't seem to be uh, able to get us the system. Yeah. So, but, you know, shame on me for trying it twice. But yeah. it's, How'd you know? I don't want to be installing the same January. Right. So, if we did have a camera system on the health center last Thursday, we would have saw a bear breaking into the garbage room uh, that's outside the health center. Friday morning, I 
and told there was a mess and so on and so forth. Come to find out the garbage, the village now that it's after the holidays, switched from Monday to Thursday. Mondays and Thursdays, they went to Mondays and Fridays. So Thursday it would have been picked up normally, now it's Friday, so the bear was found a treat there. The bear there. knew this new schedule? He knew the schedule. Obviously he wow. did, but he did not. Remarkable. Pretty smart guy. Very remarkable. They're mm -hmm. a smart species. So we will have to repair the building down there, which is the door and latch system, and figure out how to get them to put the garbage out just a day later. So that Friday, one, you know, when they pick it up on Friday, it's just put there. It's there. That's it. That's it. Okay, we'll move on to old business. Uh, Nancy, BST, <coughs> any updates? Uh, well, I've been getting various emails from BST about the audit. Uh, they're working on a narrative now, a narrative section, and uh, I went into the office today and got some further information from Debbie on uh, the retirees benefits and and the like and forwarded that email and got a very nice thank you that they got it so hopefully they'll be finishing up very soon super hopefully okay next is our building code enforcement fees at our last meeting we had um, tabled it uh, to pass the resolution because we wanted to wait for the village to have a chance to get get it ironed out and get on board uh, together Bob Bankovich, uh, Mark Doniger, the village trustee, and myself had met to review the new fees. Mark took the information to the village board meeting on September 28th, and the trustees voted to increase the fees in conjunction with the town. So, I am looking for a motion that we go ahead and move the fees as we had agreed upon. Uh, second? I'll second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? I think pretty, we pretty well covered it all. I think we're Last just deferring to the village and yes. uh, if they've had a chance to review it. Yep, they're all set. Okay, so hearing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. okay. Don. <laughs> yes. We can hear you, Don. Okay. Can you? Yep. Okay. Next is the dumpster rental agreement. Um, at our last meeting, we had also tabled this, and everybody has a copy tonight with the change. The change that we had put in was um, the Town of Lake Pleasant Highway Department will cause no unreasonable damage to the land during the work and is not responsible for any property damage. So that was what we had added in the bottom. Everything else looked good at the last meeting, except for we were concerned about liability there. Um, so covers it for me. So okay. Moved. So okay. Second. I'll second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Don, did you hear the addition to that? Second. Yeah, I can hear everything. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Me. You're opposed. You're opposed, Don. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're out there, so. Okay. Okay. So next. I am in favor. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to um, the youth rec uh, ski program with Oak Mountain. Don and Nancy, I'm going to turn it over to you folks. To. Okay. Did you want to do that one, Don? No, I'm going in and out of here with the uh, reception, so maybe you should handle that. Okay. Uh, Don and I met with Laura and Matt O'Brien and uh, discussed about ski lessons and um, rental, uh, uh, rentals of equipment as being what the town will be paying for our uh, students or children this year. And um, we're we kind of left the ball in their court to come up with pricing and, you know, if they have any idea the number of, of kids that they might have this year. And uh, we worked on kind of a, a little contract that I just typed up that we would have to refine somewhat on the board level to work out with them. 
but uh, that is the gist of the meeting. We also said in that, in that meeting that we were not going to cover the ski team. And that was uh, the consensus of the board this year that we pay for lessons and we pay for rentals. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Neil, we did go back into our minutes to try and find some kind of communication that was gone when you were supervisor, and I did find it, and it was, uh, it had nothing broken down. Betsy made a copy, made a copy of it. Just so that you can read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So you did have you did have some communication, right? There. That's that would have been in the minutes. There was more specifics to the board at the time, <clears throat> but um, you know there was uh, at one point it was both uh, we wanted to be as generous as we could for the kids, mm -hmm. and also there was a feeling at the town board level at the time to help support the village's uh, efforts at mm -hmm. Oak. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're currently in a different world here uh, now as far as our budget goes. And while uh, it may seem, I don't know, stingy to not be sponsoring teams or the like of that, uh, across the board in this year's budget, we're going to have to make some tough decisions. Uh, small bits out of lots of, <laughs> lots of pockets. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for now, that's kind of what we have, and yeah, we'll, we'll be waiting to hear that. from uh, Oak Mountain mm -hmm. on their fees for the coming year. Okay. Okay, next, under new business, short-term rentals, Airbnb, town and village, we're looking into developing some kind of guidelines, and, and it's for safety reasons, obviously. Um, you know, well water not being tested, no smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, septic you know, systems being large enough. Um, so this is something that Jeanette and I had discussed and she had mentioned it earlier tonight, um, that we would like to put a committee together to work on it. It's nothing that's gonna happen overnight, but we would like to get the ball rolling and, and start getting our information together between the two. Um, so Jeanette is going to get one or two from Speculator herself and myself, and I know that I'd be happy Bob Begovich would like to be on it. Neil, you'd like to be on it? Well, I'd be happy to serve. Um, I Great. think one of the, naturally, the things you just mentioned are concerns uh, for folks. In pre-COVID, uh, notwithstanding, they've been concerns. Uh, but I think one of the things that we have to do uh, from a committee standpoint, as you try to put together a joint uh, sort of local law, mm -hmm. is uh, you know how do the the places that rent rooms feel about this, and whether or not um, there's the kind of demand. What I know from some folks who actually run the Airbnbs, uh, everyone appreciates more revenue, absolutely, uh, more income, um, but. Uh, you know, there's two sides to every story of coin, mm -hmm. and I think you know that needs to be heard. Uh, the safety part, of course, is is one of the things that's it's always been in the back of my mind. Um, I know all of the safety requirements that came with renting rooms to temporary lodging for folks, and they were strict, um, and they should have been, uh, as you say, fire. Uh, the access, um, uh, having, making sure that there's people there to uh, take care of any and all emergencies, and then the cleanliness aspects and so on. I've stayed in those things, and you get good results, and sometimes not. But um, uh, before a community goes and, and demonizes this, mm -hmm. or puts out the welcome mat for it, I agree that there should be a committee. There mm -hmm. should be, all, all precincts should be heard from. Okay, so I will get in touch with Jeanette and we'll try to put this together. Um, and thank you, Neil, for that. Next is the 2021 tentative budget. Debbie? I just want to let everybody know that the town clerk was served with the tentative budget um, last Thursday, which was the date that it was supposed to be in. 
and we have further been talking about um, budget workshops um, to be advertised in the future. Uh, we're looking at dates October 14th at 2, October 16th at 2, and October 21st at 2, and these will be held at the town hall, not at the library so that if there are paperwork or other things that have to be pulled out, we'd have everything accessible at that, that point in time. Um, we have heard from Brian Molt about our health insurance, and um, I tried to get together with him today and meeting with the, the staff uh, meeting. He asked for this Friday. I told him that the highway guys are not here on Fridays. So I did uh, send him back an email saying uh, maybe either Tuesday or Thursday of next week. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from him on that. Okay. You want to go ahead and advertise those dates? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. 14th, 16th, and 21st. Correct. At 2 o'clock is town hall. Okay. Next, our employee handbook we're looking to update. Um, we have nothing in there when we were looking up some information, uh, Randy, Neil, and I. There's nothing on social media, Facebook. There's just, it's never been covered. I guess it's never been issues. And we kind of think that it's getting to be the time that we need to update and get that uh, in our handbook as well. So I had actually talked to Chris ahead of time and asked her if she would be willing to uh, take this project on. And she said she would. Um, you still feel yes, Chris? Mm -hmm. You're more than willing? Okay, I have a folder up here of all kinds of samples, and I know you said okay. you had some, so I'll give that to you before you leave. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of stuff. I contacted the Association of Towns, and this is all the information they had sent me. Mm -hmm. um, so should be, should be some helpful stuff there. Right? There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When, when, when I met with Randy, and we talked about this briefly, it's just the kind of thing that sneaks up on you, um, that you think you have a pretty tight, well-done handbook, and then you realize that the whole world is changing. Um, and while you don't want to stifle anyone's free speech, you have to make sure there's some continuity mm -hmm. in, in the way you handle issues that come up via social media. Mm -hmm. So that's the handbook. Um, Debbie, you just mentioned Brian Moult. Um, he, he actually got Debbie the fees for our employee medical insurance. And the seniors gold um, will actually be negative 0.50% compared to last year. Down a half percent. Yep. Down a half a percent. Um, and the estimate for all other employees will be going up 3.7, which is also tenant. We had uh, figured in the budget, just guesstimate in our tentative budget, 5% for gold. Yeah. So that's just like a informational kind of thing for you. Um, our next meeting will be Monday, October 19th at 7 p.m. at the library. Um, and from there, is there any other committee reports? No. Well, the only thing that uh, the website committee. Okay. Um, I know I told you, Betsy, I don't know mm -hmm. if you passed along, but. Uh, the Digital Towpath Cooperative had its annual meeting on September 25th, mm -hmm. at which the representatives from the towns, which are all part owners of this, um, voted to keep the fees the same as they were this year. Mm -hmm. So I think that makes three years in a row that they haven't changed. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Any other committees? Okay, and I'm looking for a motion to pay the bills from September 5th's abstract. I'll move. A second? Second. Okay, Neil. Um, any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? I heard you, Don. <laughs> okay, next is round table. You want to start, Neil? Uh, yeah, just that um, uh, I did reach out uh, to the village regarding um, the benches um, issue that's coming up. And uh, the mayor was nice enough to send me an informational, so sort of catch me up to speed email. Um, and it, it, it mainly circulates uh, around uh, the maintenance 
part of things. They um, they have the storage down very well ever since the um, trailer was, was sourced. Uh, not all of the benches made it out last year, uh, but uh, certainly a great a great representation of them. Um, we do ha have to, uh, you know, attack this uh, in a way that makes some sense. Um, the village were the receivers of these things back what apparently was 10 or 11 years ago. Um, and what started out as the, the beautification committee morphed to a revitalization committee. Everyone remembers the revitalization plan and so on. That was done uh, jointly, run out of the town uh, hall then. But um, the great preponderance of them are in the village. And uh, as I say, I think they're used well. I think they were welcome at for uh, a lot of our pedestrians. Um, but the $500 fee that was paid by the benefactors included one re rehab, one, one recondition by Jerry Emmerine, who made those beautiful benches. Uh, so there's a few things up in the air, whether Jerry will, will continue to uh, work on them. He's in another big project these days. Uh, whether or not um, some of them are starting to get in some disrepair. And they've all, all been reconditioned by that first fee. So um, uh, I said to a couple of folks from the old revitalization committee um, and to the mayor that you know, we'll see if we can't work out something across this winter that would um, perhaps raise some money, maybe from the old the folks who originally donated uh, to go back for rehab of those those benches. I'm told that there was a fund uh, under the auspices of the village uh, clerk treasurer um, that's completely been expended, and in fact, the village has expended some of their own funds towards uh, some of these rehabs. So. As I said, I feel that it's a uh, <clears throat> it's a great project. It is something of a joint project uh, tied to our revitalization, and hopefully we can fund it from outside municipal sources. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll work on that. Okay, Chris, anything um, connected with the um, digital toll pantry? For an additional $170 a year, we can have email archiving. And I don't know if that's something the board would be interested in or not. It certainly would be nice to relieve the uh, employees of that responsibility. So it's just something to discuss if you want to think you might want to. <coughs> I remember when, when this was being set up and uh, Newell was working on this. Uh, he, that he had mentioned that, that that was something mm -hmm. they do. Yeah. Um, it it backs up all the email from all the official town addresses automatically. So it's always recoverable. Yeah. So it might be something to consider. Yeah. Well, I, I know in the past, uh, during my time as supervisor, there were um, two times where, uh, you know, FOIL requests were really quite a pain in the butt mm -hmm. um, and not for any reason that we were trying to obfuscate but it was hard to to find them all because uh, some of them would come directly to the supervisor some were coming to the assessor's office some were coming these were these were assessment lawsuits mm -hmm. and the like of that um, but uh, it, it, we'd have we'd have uh, board uh, discussions uh, in in closed sessions and so on that wouldn't be foils, but then there were, you know, occasional email this or that, and, and you think, oh, my God, wouldn't it be great if we were somehow able to, to do this? Um, so it, pretty cheap actually. Yeah. Because that's, <laughs> if we get a foil, it's worth that on one search. For uh, Nancy, you were mm -hmm. digging and digging and digging. Um, we don't really have the manpower for, for that kind of thing, so. Because um, you have to know the big brother's watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but we, we've all gone to enough uh, uh, coach em up sessions and, and new electives and this and that to tell you that, you know, what you, what, what you type is 
it should be able to go in the paper direct. So, mm -hmm. so what's your pleasure, everyone? Well, at the risk of saying yes to any new expenditures after I just yeah. was mm -hmm. wagging my yeah. proverbial finger, um, it it's, should be it should be up for good, you know, debate in our in our hand, in our uh, workshops. Okay. Okay. Next, Nancy. I don't have anything. Don, do you have anything? Uh, just one thing. Uh, I will join Neil if it's what everybody wants on the short-term rental committee. We can't do that. Yeah. We we can't we, have. We'd here. make a quorum. Well, only if if, if you if, sit. If I. Uh, if we already have the mayor, but I mean, from our board, if right. you don't, then. Then he could. We can't have a quorum. I can step down. And... Okay, Don, I'll step down and then. Okay. I'll... Okay. All right. So what do you say? He'll volunteer if we need somebody. Thank you, Don. Oh, so you're not step down? No. Okay. Not at this point, but. Um... He can be an alternate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so next, okay, we have signed the contract. What? Debbie? Do you have any? Yeah. Randy? Okay, so next, um, we've signed the contract with Williamson on September 22nd. Bob has been in touch with them and their office, and they'll be starting shortly. Um, the village has also signed up the contract. They also went with Williamson. Um, I just want to mention Paul Cleveland has been cleaning the trash along Route 8 for the past three weeks from Pasico to Speculator. Show your appreciation when you go by. Honk your horn, you know, give him a thumbs up. Um, if you see him, thank him. Yeah. You know, let him know just, just how lucky that. we are to have a great person like that in our community. On that walk in the point, for those of us who, who have to get Facebook, have Facebook. You get those things where it pops up from years before. Mm -hmm. well, this one was like five, I mean, more than five years ago, because it was me in the yeah. office, me and Leo, yeah. uh, standing out front, giving Paul a, a commendation from the town board yeah. for just this kind of work. And the truth is, it's only gotten better. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. He continues to, yeah. to, to do these things. Yeah. And uh, it's the kind of stuff that people only notice when the roads look like hell. Uh, and no one notices when you know the mm -hmm. litter is all picked up. Uh, having been one of these picker uppers for a long time and mm -hmm. yep. adopting Miles myself, yep. it is thankless work. And Paul, he does it quietly, especially and, uh, this year. Yeah, yeah, the, yes. You know, touching yeah. objects. Yeah. yeah. Kudos to Paul. Yeah. Okay. Next, Nancy and I have been working with the state examiner's office and the treasurer's office, working on corrections to the AUD from 2019. Um, and I just wanted to also mention Erica Mahoney from our County Public Health Department has received the 2020 Rural Health Champion Award. Um, and they had a, a ceremony last week up at, in County in Indian Lake where she actually got the award, of course, via Zoom. Um, so I was lucky enough to be invited and I attended and it was very, very nice, uh, very nice day for her. Um, um, the open meeting law has been extended until November 3rd, so our next two meetings will be via Zoom. Um, Debbie and I have taken another webinar with the Association of Towns on the ups and downs of town budget. Mm -hmm. And then also Randy, Debbie, Bob, and I completed the Hamilton County All Hazard Mitigation Plan for 2020 that Don Purdy from Emergency Services is working on with Shannon Thayer. She's the community planner for Mountain View Planning. So that's a project that the county's working on and trying to get all the towns on board. And Lake Pleasant was the first town to complete it all and get all the paperwork in. They're very happy with us. And lastly, the floors um, at the primary care. I took the samples over and let the girls pick out what they wanted. Uh, just feel that they're there day in and day out. They have to work there. They have to look at it. Um, so they picked it out, they picked the carpeting out, and it's now all been ordered. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. And our flag is at half staff this week, honoring our fallen <clears throat> firefighters. And that's all I have. That, that's one of the benefits of having put the flag back to full yes. staff, 
It um, means something now. It, that once in a while there's other causes not to you know, belittle the COVID. We'll put it down. Andy. Uh, oh, okay. This morning. The, you know, the COVID deaths were a national tragedy, a state tragedy. It was but, time when I got there. Uh, it was time so that we'd go back up mm -hmm. so that you could, in fact, recognize other Absolutely. important causes. Yep. So if that's it, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. John? <laughs> Second. Okay. Good night, everybody.